So this is a pretty typical day. It's a Wednesday today. It's not a Saturday or a Sunday, and I'm at home. Uh, my kids are here, they're running around. We actually homeschool, so they're doing their lessons, sprinkled in there too. And this is pretty much our life. Um, I do work here. I'm able to like do my marketing campaigns and things from my home office here. And I'm only really at the shop um, very minimally. I go in maybe a couple of days a week. And most of the time, this really is the lifestyle that we have. Um, learning how to grow my business and really have a lifestyle where I have both time and money has allowed us to really have a family life that we have always, always dreamed of. I always thought that it would be fantastic to be able to do my business, run my business, and have my kids kind of running around at the same time. I realize that most you know, family life looks like maybe a couple of hours after school, after school activities that you get to have together and maybe grab a quick bite. But we just made it a real priority uh, to have this kind of a family life where we really have so much more time together. In order to do that, needed to grow the business so that I wasn't the end all be all and we could actually take a pro good profit from it as well as you know have the time that we're really looking for. So this is a typical day you know for us and it just really became after we set that goal and we did the actions in order to achieve it that we're here. So I would highly encourage you know any small business owner hey guys hi any small business owner to really consider for yourself what is that goal? What does your lifestyle goal look like? and work towards it. And this is how we've been able to do it. You know, we were able to grow this business from doing very little to basically a business that didn't exist 18 months ago to now generating about 80,000 in revenue, six full-time employees and, and hiring more. Since joining Main Street Marketing, my business uh, is up 20% and I am spending less money on advertising than I was before. Once we started using Main Street Marketing for our ads, business just started rolling and the phones were ringing off the hook. Um, we were starting to do quite a bit of sales, so much so that in December 2017, we hired our first employee. We actually, in January, February, it's not uncommon to do twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 in sales um, that we control a lot of that uh, revenue um, using the Main Street Marketing program. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we're spending $200 a month on Main Street Marketing and our profits are up 20%. That's probably the best investment we've made in our business. So Allie J Boutique is here on Main Street in a little town, New London, Minnesota. It's your typical Main Street scenario. Uh, we have insurance agencies, a photography studio, coffee shop, cafe, a candy store. And this is really where my story begins. So back in 2008, I was a stay-at-home mom, and I really loved being a stay-at-home mom, but I knew that there was something missing in my life. I knew that there needed to be a chance for me to get out, to be with women, and I thought if I could make some money for my family, all the better, right? And so what I actually uh, started to look into were home parties, where I'd be able to you know, go to into women's homes and have that time with them, but also make some money. But nothing really, you know, stuck out to me as far as um, any of those businesses. Along the same time, my sister actually uh, came back from a trip from New York where she was living the life that I really wanted to live. And she brought back uh, pashmina scarves and they were gorgeous. And I just knew that there was something there. So I took $300 from my savings account, which we really didn't have. And I bought my first box of scarves from New York and set up shop. And that's where the story all began. 
uh, I did women's events and expos and so many home parties and I traveled, I packed up my little van and I traveled all across Minnesota, South Dakota, Wisconsin, anywhere that I could. So um, it became pretty apparent that it would actually be less work and I could maybe make more money if I actually opened up a storefront. And that's where Alley J Boutique began. I'm really excited to share with you my story of Alley J Boutique and how we grew it uh, from a struggling business, frankly, taking home no money, to a very profitable business that I really love um, working at and running. And I started to realize that I need to learn that was my problem. My problem wasn't here, it wasn't in anything else. It wasn't, you know, I, I would think that my problem was I, I have to display beautifully enough. My shop isn't big enough. I, I had doubled the size of the shop and that would fix it, it didn't. And Wade and I looked at each other and we said, well, he goes, you know that if you don't go for it, you're always gonna wonder. So I sold a car, we paid $7,500 and I started to learn. Uh, but first, I want to show you my friends, uh, Ryan and Christine of Naples Audiology. So Ryan and Christine, they have a business selling hearing aids, and they actually have this business, which is a high-end business selling sometimes thousands of dollar um, product in an area that is really competitive. And this is in Naples, Florida. And Naples is an area that has a lot of their prime customer, but as you could imagine, there are a lot of audiology clinics that they are competing against. But they have managed with mainstream marketing and the strategy that they put in place to become the leading uh, audiology clinic in Naples, Florida. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from them. So here's Ryan and Christine. I would like to say first and foremost that as a small business owner, sometimes you yourself may not know every aspect of business. Um, and if you do, that's fantastic. But I knew I had my strengths and I knew there were areas where I was not as strong. And I was fortunate enough to have somebody in my life that is excellent when it comes to the business side of things. I knew I was a great audiologist and I knew where my heart was and how I could help my patients. But I also knew that I had an excellent partner and my husband to help me with the business side of things. So that's where he comes in, that's his. Yeah, his so partner. for those of you who are contemplating starting a small business or have started a small business, you know, you have to get a loan. You know, unfortunately we didn't have the money in the check account to just buy a business. So we, we had to put together a business plan. And part of that business plan is putting five year projections in place for whoever you're trying to get to loan you the money to say, we can pay you back. Here's how we can do it. So, you know, for me, when I do five-year projections, and I've done this for multiple businesses that I've been involved in, I always, um, you know, plan for the worst and hope for the best. So in my projections, I'm very, I'm very conservative in my projections, mm -hmm. but I'm realistic because we still have to get the loan. Um, and when I sat down and started to run the, the five-year projections for our business, you know, we, I, I literally didn't have us hiring an employee until I'm going to say 15 months into the business, which looking back on it seems crazy. So in late August, 2017, we officially closed on our audiology practice. And in September, on September 10th, 2017, Hurricane Irma hit Southwest Florida. Okay, then moving slightly up the coast, hitting us here in Naples after 4 p.m. Here in Naples, one of the hardest hit areas, the eye of Irma made land. Uh, and now the intensity of it is 42 miles per hour. There's a giant vacuum sucking everything. The water is rising, and the authorities tell us it's expected to rise between 9 and 15 feet. Officials warning people, you know, it is still dangerous out here. There's Again, everyone, it's not just you at home dealing with power outages. Thousands of businesses are also trying to get their doors back open. It was pretty massive. We had never experienced a hurricane before personally, and we had just closed on our business. And here we are with a hurricane. It shut down the entire town. We had no power anywhere. We had no phone lines, no internet. So certainly business was not happening. We had leaks in the ceilings at the office, and this was literally, we had been in business for two weeks. Not an ideal way to start a business. Um, so for the first 
really the whole month of September, the entire town was shut down. Most people were gone because they had evacuated and there was really no reason for them to come back yet because life was just not normal yet. Um, we weren't allowed to even use the water the normal way. We weren't supposed to be flushing toilets. We weren't supposed to be doing laundry. So again, it was just kind of a ghost town for a long time and we had zero sales for the first two months in business. Obviously not an ideal way to start a business. So before I share with you how that story ends, I wanna take you up to Alabama where you're gonna meet Linda Hardy. Linda owns Magnolia's Gift Shop. And this is a much more established business. It's been around for 25 plus years. Um, and they were very successful already, but Linda really wanted to try something new, something different with their marketing. I started Magnolia's many years ago because I was looking for um, a, a meaningful gift to give a dear friend whose dog had died. And I went everywhere in town, because I like to shop local, and I could not find anything for less than $50. And I just wanted it to be something nice that she could always remember, and just kind of thought I could do it. <laughs> it started out, word of mouth was just what made my business grow. Honestly, that was my advertising. Our business grew based purely on word of mouth because I didn't have the money to advertise. And I didn't know really anything about advertising. Up until this point, there's never been any kind of advertising that I ever did that could be measured, which is not a very comforting thing. Uh, in radio, they always tell you that you can reach 5,000 people in this area, and if you own many stations, you could reach 50,000 people but that's only 50,000 people if they happen to be turned in when your advertisement went on. So they can't really prove that it did anything, and I've tried that, and you can't measure it. And I had one instance where we did a coupon. If you came in and said that you, well, it wasn't a coupon, but if you came in and said that you heard this on the local radio station, then you got 10% off your purchase. Their own employees came into the store and didn't mention that. So. That's not very measurable, <laughs> except for zero. So whether you are a small business owner with 25 years under your belt, or you're a brand new small business owner, there is definitely one thing that is universally true. And that is, it is very, very difficult to figure out great advertising, how to measure your marketing. That's true whether you have 10, 20 years of experience or you're brand new. So the next business owner that I'm going to share with you, his name is Shane, and he actually owns a handyman business. And he made it his mission in the very first year to actually figure out marketing. Uh, it's not like he's gonna be able to swing a hammer better than the next handyman down the road, but he understood that his key differentiator was really going to be excellent marketing. Let's hear from him. I'm Shane Saunders. We're a residential handyman repair business in the Phoenix area. So this is a really good example of what a typical job looks like for us. We're not doing $50,000 sexy remodels. This is pretty basic stuff. The guys are doing a trim today. Uh, I think they're doing some frozen valves, some waterline stuff, replacing a waistline. Just normal general handyman type repairs on this condo. Let's go take a look. Brad, do not fall on film. <laughs> I mean, I don't want you to fall at all. But, uh... A couple of years ago, I had no marketing and also had no work-life balance at all. Because the only thing I knew how to do at that time was to just work harder and, and hope that there was some results from that. You know, and I look at now where we are today, the, the side business, the handyman business, doing about 80,000 in revenue a month. Um, our real estate business last year did right at 22 million in sales volume. Um, and all that was done while, you know, taking about eight weeks off last year to travel, to spend time with family, to hunt. Um, and, and all that was possible through marketing. Like I, I never had that life before. 
because I didn't know how to market. I didn't invest time and money into marketing. And I never knew where my next lead was gonna come from or how to generate that lead. So I was always stuck in just work hard, work hard, work hard, and it'll generate results. And that gets you so far, um, but just <laughs> terrible, terrible work-life balance in, in that world. And uh, you know, now I'm just fortunate. I, I have that peace, that, that sense of calm that I know that marketing's working. We have more than enough work coming in in both businesses, and it's just an amazing place to be and, and a great feeling to have. I think a lot of people think that when they need to, to start a business that they have to have some sort of business degree or an MBA from university, um, you know, didn't even finish college. But just through marketing, investing in marketing and learning and investing dollars in, in ads, you know, we were able to grow this business from doing very little to basically a business that didn't exist 18 months ago to now generating about 80,000 in revenue, six full-time employees and, and hiring more. And, and again, all of that was done just by an, an investment into to the marketing of the business, not just being so focused on doing the work, the day-to-day -day operations of the business, but, but always continuing to make sure that we market and grow. One thing we constantly preach at Main Street Marketing is that as a small business owner, your most important role is marketing. It's not the accounting, it's not taking inventory, because without actual customers coming through the door, truly those things don't matter. So the one main role that you really have to focus on as a small business owner is truly marketing. And that's true for Shane, you know, who is a hand, owns a handyman business. It's also true for the next small business owner that we're gonna introduce you to. This is Trevor and he owns, drum roll please, a vacuum store. So Trevor's vacuum store is actually in a rural town in Minnesota. It's not located in some fancy suburb where he has lots of people with lots of money to buy his vacuums, but it has been key that he has used the Main Street Marketing strategy to grow his business. In fact, he was actually just months away from having to close his doors and he had let go all of his employees and he was really down to being the end all be all. But since he implemented the Main Street Marketing strategy, he now has hired people back again, and he really has proven that the Main Street Marketing strategy does work for him. He's the main marketer of his business. So let's meet Trevor. Hey, I'm Trevor Hansen, owner of AB Vacuum Center, and we are located in Wilmer, Minnesota. We sell vacuum cleaners. Um, Wilmer is a town of 20,000 people here in central Minnesota. When I was a kid um, growing up, uh, just like every other kid, uh, I think I wanted to be an astronaut, of course a football player, and then as I got older I actually wanted to get into carpentry and build houses, but um, my father um, had this business um, in 1975. This was a uh, Kirby dealership, so I grew up in the business. 2008, um, my dad passed away, so I was working for my mom who took over the ownership of the business at that time, and two years later I bought it and uh, I've owned it ever since. So when I say we are a vacuum store, I literally mean we sell vacuum cleaners. Um, we, like the car dealership sells cars, we sell vacuum cleaners to people that come to us. Um, it's not the sexiest thing in the world, but um, we're in a small town here in Wilmer in central Minnesota, and we're a farm community, and we're having success uh, um, selling vacuum cleaners from you know, 500 to $1,000, um, even a few of them that are more than that. Um, it's a little niche business and uh, it's going well for us. So Trevor's vacuum store has been through a lot over the past years, but before we actually share the rest of that story, let's go back to the beginning, to Ali J Boutique, and let me share with you my story. So when I opened up the shop, I certainly did not have this grand business plan. I didn't have like a 10 page document and did all the steps and went to the bank and took out a grand loan. I was totally flying by the seat of my pants. And I think that's what a lot of small business owners really do. They find themselves taking the next step, not knowing exactly how it's going to pan out, but they just keep on going with it. And that's certainly, you know, my story as a small business owner as well. 
Hi there, Allie J with Allie J Boutique here, and I am finally getting my scarf videos going. I know that it's been a long Allie time. Allie J Boutique has officially begun. Who knew that we could fit all of this side of the shop in this corner right over here? Crazy, huh? So the first year in business, I was actually open Fridays and Saturdays, and I was the sole employee of Alley J Boutique at that time. I would go in the morning, I would open up the door, and I would have to be the one closing it at the end of the day. And that first year, I think I made about $60,000 in sales. But if you're watching this, you are a small business owner and you know that that does not mean that I took home $60,000. In fact, I think at the end of the year, I had about $10,000. Um, and so for me, working as a full-time employee, um, if I were to actually hire somebody at a $2 an hour wage or so, that would actually be illegal. But isn't it amazing as entrepreneurs, we can actually do that. We can take home like a $2 an hour pay, but doing it for somebody else would actually be illegal. That's what we do as small business owners. So rolling into the second year of business, my husband Wade and I, we would you know, have these conversations about the shop and I'd be like, hey, isn't it awesome? I made $10,000. And he is a lot more analytical than I am, I'll be honest. And he would bring up you know, some of the other aspects that maybe I wasn't thinking about and what it really took to make that $10,000, all of the time and effort and energy behind the scenes in order to do this. Second year of business, we actually opened up to six days a week being open because I think at that time, my thought was, if I could do this much here, if I only open up more hours, won't they come? And uh, the reality was I just basically spread out my business over a six day work week and there I was, um, putting more energy and everything into the business about 80 hours a week at that time and I was still only making the same amount of money. As you can imagine our Wade and my conversations would really be a back and forth and he did point out to me realistically at one point he said you could actually make more money if you took on a job at the local coffee shop and work way less hours, way fewer hours, and be home with us so much more if you went ahead and did that. Is this really, really what you want to do? What are you doing this for? So when I had that conversation with my husband, it was actually a huge wake up call. And rightfully so, he pointed out the obvious to me and I just really needed to hear that at that time. It was at that moment that I really started to understand that I would need to think about everything that I was doing in terms of being a business owner, of running an actual business. I think I had this emotional kind of attachment to being like this fancy boutique owner with all the pretty things and setting the stage just beautifully. But when it came down to it at the end of the day, when I would go home and look at my four kids that were at home and they were getting a lot less time of their mom and looking at Wade, his point was very valid. And so I really had to take on this um, newer mentality of understanding how can I actually run this as a true profitable business? When I think back to the first couple of years of Ally J Boutique, my main goal was to just not lose money every single month. In fact, if I could break even, that would be amazing. So now when I think about businesses like Magnolia's that have been around for 25 years, successfully running profitably, uh, and what Linda and Jordan have been able to do there, I think as a small business owner, knowing what I know now, that gives me just such a greater level of respect for business owners who are able to have these longevity businesses, be profitable, and it's really frankly quite amazing. I don't think the advertising aspect of the business actually came into play until Jordan joined the business. And she was um, savvy on Facebook and, and with the social trends on Facebook, that became an avenue that we could advertise. And I would just say that she's the one that really sparked the interest there. I'm pretty much just the mom <laughs> that says, that sounds good, <laughs> you know, we'll go with that. That's really what led to the, the marketing aspect of the store. Yeah, so um, I pretty much have grown up in a small business. I mean, it opened in 92 and I was five years old. So um, I've always been around the store and in the store and working in the store. Um, I remember as a kid, I would play in the back and like pop the bubble when new merchandise would come in because that was fun. Uh, so I've always been part of the store. And then when I would go, I went off to college and came back and I would work, you know, Christmas breaks and things like that. 
Um, never really thought it was something that I envisioned myself doing. Um, but I came, I actually, after college, I played golf professionally for a few years and came back home during the off season, really enjoyed being in the store, you know, working with customers. Uh, I realized like, this is really fun and I'm like kind of good at it. So uh, I might, I might stick around for a while. Um, and so then, you know, business uh, continued to improve and uh, that's kind of when we realized that we were at a point where we could kind of grow and open another location. And so that really opened an opportunity for me to step in and, you know, take a full, a full time position and, um, and really for the first time ever, like get a paycheck and uh, work at the store. And in fact, we took a picture of my very first paycheck. You know? um, so that's how I got involved in the store full time. I get so inspired thinking about small business success stories like Magnolia's. Uh, but I know what you're thinking, you know, they sell gift items, $30, $40, $50. What if you're selling, say, an $800 vacuum cleaner? I just want to give you a quick behind the scenes look here at AB Vacuum Center. This is our shop where we do all our service work, a bunch of uh, parts and so on back here. Um, but I want to take you around the corner to our bread and butter of the business and that's uh, selling vacuum cleaners. We have a number of different machines from handbags to um, canisters, uprights, but this machine right here is kind of our go-to. Um, this is the machine that makes our business. This is the Recar. It's uh, gonna last the customer 20, 25, 30 years, and it's going to clean much better than many of the other machines. I'm gonna give you a quick, just abbreviated demonstration. Normally this is about a 15 minute demonstration. And one great thing about Main Street Marketing is that it's cut this demonstration in about half because customers come in already pre-educated on a lot of this stuff that I'm gonna show them. So it makes the demonstration go a lot quicker, plus their trust is up so much. But this is what I do for them, just uh, again, very abbreviated, but um, like to show them the competition vacuum. I'll go over this a number of times. And then what we sell, um, and these machines just have a whole bunch more agitation. They also have the ability to do hardwood tile linoleum very well and very easily, and then have a nice long hose on them for doing the hose type cleaning. So that's how we sell, and Main Street Marketing has helped us sell $1,000 vacuums. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, the town I'm in, Wilmer, Minnesota. We're a town of just under 20,000 people. Um, we're considered a farm community. Um, we're not a big, rich, uh, Beverly Hills, New York type uh, town. We're small, a um, lot of farmers. Uh, that's what drives our economy around here. And our customer base is that. I mean, our uh, medium income here in Wilmer is under $40,000, I believe. Um, that's household income. And we're selling, um, you know, $800,000 vacuum cleaners to everybody. I mean, from every lifestyle in town. Um, we don't, we have doctors and a few lawyers, but nah, our town is not, you know, a rich community by any means. Selling products like that in a community like we're in is tough and we need a excellent marketing plan and that's what Main Street Marketing gives us. Um, we, uh, it's not uh, people just breaking down the doors to come in and spend a thousand dollars on a vacuum. You just don't get that without premium marketing and that's what we're getting from Main Street. Sometimes I think the difference between good marketing and great marketing is being able to sell boring products at a premium price. So our, our business is very much the definition of, of handyman residential work. I mean, we can do anything from replacing a ceiling fan to replacing a garbage disposal, you know, leak under the kitchen sink, a roof tile. This is not full remodel. Um, in fact, our average job cost is right around $700. So this is a volume based business. We need to do a lot of bids every month and we need to get a lot of jobs awarded every month to make this company profitable. 
one of the things that, that I hear a lot uh, from small business owners is, is how great their work is, how great the quality is, um, especially in the contracting side. You know, you always hear people say, oh, I've been doing this for 20 years. It's like, does that matter? I mean, <laughs> like we all basically do the same thing on different levels, sure. Really in contracting, I hear this a ton. Ironically, it's usually from, from struggling contracting companies about how their quality of work and their craftsmanship is second to none. It's like, I, I get that this goes back to, you know, like quality has to be there. You can't, you can't build your business on quality because if there's no job to do quality work at, then it doesn't matter how good your quality of work is, right? So I, I fully understand that our company, this is why we don't sub stuff out. This is why they're W2 employees. Um, so that we have more control over quality of work. But at the same time, like you can't just brag about quality of work when there's no work to be done. So you have to focus on the marketing piece, make sure that you have the work coming in so that you can perform a quality job. Like that's, that's just the cost of entry is doing quality work. Outside of that, I mean, you have got to market, get business to be able to fulfill on. Shane learned the importance of marketing in his very first year. I'm jealous. So I actually had the worst of both worlds because if you are running your own business, the idea and one of the biggest reasons you do that is so you can have the time, the freedom, the energy to be able to do things. And of course the money to be able to take vacations or to buy those extra things for your family that you're really wanting. But my reality was Wade and I were not taking vacations. In fact, we hadn't taken a vacation in five years and I also would come home exhausted. So I didn't have that extra time. And by the way, I was making no money. So I had the, I had just had the worst of both worlds. Um, and I think for small business owners, that's really what, what we get into to the outside world. It looks like we have everything put together. We've got everything arranged perfectly on our shelves. The boutique itself looked beautiful. And to all of my friends, it probably appeared that I was rocking this thing, that I was super successful. That was just not the case. Uh, I didn't have time and I didn't have money and I was just stuck there. And I think for a lot of small business owners, that's where they're at. I think it's the majority of small business owners and they're just not quite sure you know, what to do. And I had no idea what to do. That was the story of my first two years in business. So every small business owner struggles. Uh, nobody hits a home run in their very first month or frankly their first year of owning that small business. But it's what you do in the midst of that struggle that actually defines you. My uh, Main Street marketing story really started five years ago when uh, I was introduced to it. And at the time, I was uh, I had a full-time employee, full-time serviceman. Business was good. I had um, you know time to do what I wanted to do, and I didn't think I needed it at the time. Um, things were going very well for us, um, but shortly after that things steadily decreased. Every year for the next five years in a row, business was down between six and eight percent. Um, and it was just on a course that uh, where I had to lay off, or I first I cut my manager to part-time. Um, and then within another year, I had to cut them all together. So after or about three years ago, I ended up being here all by myself, doing everything and being able to handle it, um, unfortunately, because it was getting that slow. We were doing $30,000 a month out of this store, and I have a second location too that was doing about uh, $14,000, $15,000 a month. And in those times when business got tough, we gradually slowed down to the point where we were doing 20, 22 a month out of this location and down to seven, $8,000 a month out of my second location. So what that meant for me is it was either don't pay myself or lay off employees. And obviously I had to lay off employees, which gave me some sort of income back, but it meant I worked six days a week. No questions asked. 
no vacations. Um, my wife and children, I missed uh, field days, I missed t-balls, um, I missed a uh, t-ball tournament where my son, um, and you have to know my son, um, but he hit in t-ball a walk-off home run. <laughs> and I had to hear about it, I didn't get to see it, I didn't get to cheer him on as he, and, and that's just something I can't get back. Previous to that, I like to coach my kids. I like to be at those things. We camp. I would show up Saturday night for one evening um, and then pack up on Sunday um, and go home. I was more there to unpack and pack up. So in that time, not only this store, but that store, I my income went in half. I mean, it was, um, $120,000 down to $60,000, but that was only because I laid people off. Um, it would have went down to basically zero had I not laid the people off. Having a good product is not enough. Having great service is still not enough. One thing that Trevor and Magnolias really had in common is they'd been serving their communities for years and years. But the X factor for their businesses really was marketing. You know, when we opened the second store, I quickly realized that, you know, it's different than our Sylacauga store because we had been in my hometown for so long and we suddenly were in this new area and we just needed more people to come in the store. You know, we had great products, we had great customer service, but we needed more foot traffic to like physically come in the store. Uh, and we had tried magazines and newspapers and none of that visibly worked like you couldn't tell that it was working um, and so that's how I found out about Main Street Marketing and so my first uh, you know sort of conversation with mom about this strategy uh, she totally shut it down. I have to tell you sometimes when she tells me these things I think you gotta be nuts this isn't gonna work. Um, we fought a lot uh, and the first the first kind of big fight we had was over our Christmas open house um, and in that location in particular, uh, we, we were going to give out uh, a coupon that you could collect, you know, uh, on the landing page. And it was a very sizable discount, which my mom has always been very strong on price integrity. And I can certainly understand that. And so it was a risk for me to even mention it, you know, but that was really our first major headbutt. She would come up with all these ideas and a lot of them involved discounts, which I, I really don't like discounts and coupons. Everybody has an opinion on small business marketing, but who can you actually trust? And one of the other frustrating things we learned as a new small business is everybody wants to come to you and tell you the best way to market your business. They all have it figured out, whether it's the TV station, the newspaper, um, the Google ads, uh, the website designers, um, the local newspapers, you know, not just the major newspaper, but like the little newsstand TV. Everybody wants you to spend money with them and they, they have all of these grand numbers that they throw at you up front and then they want you to throw thousands of dollars at it to see if it works. Experiment. Experiment. Really expensive. It's really easy experiment. for you to say experiment when it's my money. Yeah. You're supposed to be the advertising expert. You tell me what works and then show me the numbers of how it works. And then once we implement it, I see the returns that proves that it did work. They can't show you the numbers. And they can't show you the numbers. There's just no numbers there. So anytime an advertiser wants to talk about experimenting, it's a red flag because I don't experiment with our money. It just doesn't work that way. Sound familiar? We would put $300, $500 towards advertising efforts. And at that point, I feel like the emotion that probably was driving it was guilt more than anything. And I knew I needed to do something to advertise as a small business owner. I had like that box that I needed to check every single month, right? Um, so it went on for years, but I really did not actually expect anything out of it because I was so trained to try things and put things out there, but I was not seeing the return. So all of that changed when I discovered the Main Street Marketing Program. The most important thing that I learned from the Main Street Marketing program was that marketing should actually have a goal 
and it should be measurable. In hindsight, it seemed so simple, and yet every small business owner that I talk to is struggling with this. So yeah, as business started to decline, um, I increased my ad budget because things were, you know, I needed more customers. And so I was throwing it at newspaper and radio and Google ads. Um, I increased my budget to $1,000 a month, which in this area is a lot of money. And I was hopeful. I mean, I took out um, full page um, newspaper ads, which, you know, for a community like this, um, I mean, that's big. That Not a lot of people take out full ads, so I thought I would get attention, and I just didn't see any results from that. Um, or, I mean, the, we just kept going downhill, and at the end, it's just I didn't know what to do. I mean, these uh, bills were coming in from the newspaper, from the radio, and I hadn't made enough money to cover those bills. It's kind of like if we were to go to, or our customers were to go to um, the box store and buy a TV. $1,000 TV is like us spending 1000 on advertising. And then at the end of the month, that TV doesn't work. And you, they gotta buy another one. Um, and we keep doing this as small business people over and over and over again. And it is no different than buying that TV, it breaking, it, we got nothing out of it. You got, you got to watch it for a month, but now you got to buy it again. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about traditional marketing. It's like buying that TV every month and halfway through the month getting a phone call asking if you're ready to buy another TV from a rep. It's not that small business owners aren't willing to invest money in marketing. It's just that we aren't willing to invest money if we don't even know if it's working. I mean, imagine like this, you go on a diet and you don't even own a scale. And so you think that you're not being successful, you're cutting out all of your favorite foods. Imagine how demoralizing that would be if you couldn't even measure it. That's what it's like for a small business owner. One of the most frustrating things as a business is, you know, putting money into marketing and having no idea what's working and what's not. And we try to do our best to keep track and we ask our patients, you know, how did you hear about us? Where are you coming from? Um, and we have found that Main Street Marketing has helped us with about 40% of our business. And one of the great things about Main Street Marketing was they came to us and they said, okay, let's spend a small amount of money and I'll show you how it works. And then once you see how it works, then we can put as much money as you want to grow your business exponentially. Where the other avenues just don't do that. They want your money, they wanna take your money up front. And then to even be able to track, like you said, what your rate of return on that investment is, sometimes it can't be done. We've learned through some of the major outlets, whether it's the newspaper or the TV station, it's very hard to figure out what you're getting back from that, even though you spent thousands and thousands of dollars on it. So hard work is not enough. Working long hours, working nights and weekends is not enough. It's necessary, but not sufficient. The one word answer to solve all of this is marketing. Some of the hardest working people I know are small business owners. But yet those same people that, that work insane amount of hours, that give everything they have to their business are not thriving. The, the biggest reason is Lack of marketing, failure to spend money on marketing. Um, I appreciate the, the hard work, I'll work everybody, I get all that, but after several years in business, at some point, that's gotta stop. It was very important for us to actually build a business that we could step away from at some point that would still continue to run. We've accomplished in 18 months what, what I see, it takes all companies a lot of time, five, 10 years, sometimes never. Unfortunately, a lot of times never. Um, a lot of the, the business owners that, that I know, again, I mean, they're some of the hardest working people I know, but they just, they refuse to invest in the marketing and that keeps them always having to outwork everybody just to keep the business going, keep the doors open. Honestly, I'm jealous of Shane. He figured out in one year what it took me, frankly, years to figure out. And that is you have to hold your marketing accountable if you're going to see any sort of results. So when we finally started to measure our marketing efforts and we got more strategic about it, uh, then things started to change. 
So one of the first events that we actually did using the Mainstream Marketing Program was a fashion show. And the really cool part about this campaign was that we actually set up an ad where we would gather their name, email, and phone number um, of the people who wanted a ticket to attend the fashion show, which actually was right here, um, before they even came. So the concept of actually building a database of potential prospects beforehand was a novel concept to me, but it was so valuable. Uh, so that particular night was amazing. We had actually 110 women show up. We filled up the store with chairs and some women actually had to stand. And we had a fabulous show. Women were actually lined up around the building just waiting to come in. And the atmosphere was just fabulous. And so that night, when I uh, closed up the doors at the end of the night and like all the smoked clear smoke cleared and uh, mind you, like my store had a lot less inventory <laughs> left over. Uh, I did some calculations and we did $7,500 in sales that night, which was more than I had ever done in a month of sales. This whole campaign, um, you know, that I learned through the mainstream marketing program was just so eye opening to me. And I knew that there was something here that I had to dig further into because of the success that I was seeing. I finally felt like I could actually control a form of advertising like I'd never done before. The biggest breakthrough that I had at Ali J Boutique was to think about my marketing like an event. It didn't work at all to think, uh, I've got to do marketing that keeps me top of mind, whatever that means. So if it, I wasn't able to get actual people walking through the door, it really was not going to work. And so if it took doing a larger coupon in order to actually get customers, real customers to walk through my door, then so be it. That was really our first major headbutt uh, was that she was thinking we're we're gonna spend hundreds of dollars on an ad for our Christmas open house, and we're gonna give away uh, a sizable coupon for one item. And she, uh, you don't get to vote. I'm gonna say we're not gonna do that. Um, and so that caused a lot of frustration on her part and on my part. I remember the night before Christmas open house, I was the most nervous I'd ever been about anything before. Um, and I was just praying that it would work. And uh, we had about 600 people sign up for that. And we had had three open houses before that. So I had kind of historical data to work from, you know, a goal that I knew we needed to at least meet or exceed. Um, and we actually doubled our sales that weekend. So not only was that, uh, you know, effective in getting more people in the store, I think we accounted the foot traffic and we had twice as many people come to our Christmas open house than normal. Uh, but not only that, they bought more than they ever have before, like, cause our sales were almost double too. I just had to think there's gotta be something to this. So she was very successful with that event and she's done several things after hours at, at the other locations that have been super attended. Um, people, everybody had a good time and uh, to the point that we need to limit how many people can come in. Hey, something's working. So the genius in Jordan offering this coupon wasn't actually in the short term, but it was more so in the long term. Because in order to actually get the coupon, she had to gather people's name, email, and phone number. So it wasn't just them coming in and using the coupon for that short term business, but she was actually generating this database, this list of people that she could tap into for the long term. I think she was shocked that it really was a profitable day, um, you know, because she said, well, sure, you can say that, you know, you did more of this day, but you also gave out this. Um, but I think when she saw those numbers, she was just as surprised as I was um, that, like, you know, wow, this is a completely different strategy that actually works. For a store that's been in business as long as we have, and then in that time frame, we've opened two other locations, um, for sales to continue to increase is remarkable, especially in the, the financial climates that we've lived through. So I do think it's been a measurable improvement. So I think the fact that you can measure um, what happens when you put a video on social media and those kind of things, 
I really like to know that I'm getting something for my money, like most people. So that kind of brought it home to me. Kind of the, the thing that I didn't realize was even more valuable is the fact that I now had over 600 you know, email addresses, phone numbers, and uh, snail mail, you know, mailing addresses that uh, I could use and keep um, to constantly tell people about the store. So yes, good marketing creates short-term sales, but it also creates long-term value in the form of gathering customers' contact information. The one thing that I really want you to focus in on even beyond those sales was the fact that, you know, before the event, we had actually gathered 200 names, emails, and phone numbers of women that we could, we could continue to uh, send valuable information to, that we could actually monetize um, this prospect list far beyond the actual event itself. So even if I hadn't made any sales that night, I started to recognize that having the understanding of building a database, building a list, building um, building up an actual customer base that I would have um, something for longevity in the future and not just be focused on like one-off little events or one-off little things. I was starting to think about my business in much broader terms. To this day, we have continuously built the list. And you know, that fashion show was six years ago and I kept up on continuously building the list because it truly is the most valuable asset in my business. Um, you know, when other businesses down Main Street are closing their doors and uh, throughout all of the e economic you know, influences that we have on us as small business owners, I know for a fact that if I need a boost in business, like in January, February, when it's really cold outside and people just are not coming out, I can actually use the Main Street Marketing software to send an email direct to people who have already seen and purchased and really interacted with us here at the shop, and I can create direct sales out of uh, those interactions that I can have with them using the software. Using the Main Street Marketing program gives you a direct link to your customers. And that's the fastest way to start to generate more sales. When I signed up for Main Street Marketing, I immediately came back here and started on my campaigns and I cut all my other marketing, zero. I, and I did just Main Street Marketing, thinking that maybe I'll you know, start back in, but I wanted to see just what you guys would do. To this day, almost a year later, I have not spent a penny on anything else again um, because I'm getting the results so why throw it at something that I pretty much proved wasn't working um, you know and yours is so yeah where you like you said you kind of get that guilt feeling um, and it's like no I got Main Street it's working uh, you know the radio or the newspaper one is very persistent and I can say no to her and continues to call and continues to call, but it's I don't have that guilt anymore because I'm not throwing money away for, you know, no results. I, I'm not doing that. Even in the first few months um, with the Main Street Marketing videos, we did campaigns where we would um, gather customer information and our offer was to give them a $50 gift card just for signing up, giving us their information, and that gift card could be used towards the purchase of a new vacuum. And what we saw from that were, um, I think we had three or 400 people wanting the gift card, and then after that, I mean, even bringing them in. We would send out the gift card. We had, I think, 22 to or 23 actually use the coupon and these were fifty dollars off of eight hundred thousand dollar vacuum cleaners um and so the only way um they got that was through main street marketing in that campaign um so i could directly link it to main street marketing was what got that customer through the door and eventually created a sale for us so again, Main Street Marketing takes all the guesswork out of your advertising. So you don't have to cross your fingers and hope you know, that customers are going to come into your store. One of the, the biggest problems that Main Street Marketing solved for us was just predictability of business. 
So, you know, referrals are great. I love referrals, especially as a realtor, you know, I, I get like my business is built on referrals. That's great. But at the same time, that's not a predictable business. I don't know when somebody's going to refer me. I don't know that if I take somebody to coffee this many times that they're going to refer me this many deals like that. That's just not how it works. So yes, you want to build your business on referral and have that mindset because that just obviously if that's your goal, you're serving the client well. But I mean, the, the number one goal has to be to get leads. Like that's it. You have to get leads to be able to fulfill on leads to then generate referral business in the future. So if your business is built 100% on referrals and you have two, some doesn't add up there, right? So, you know, even in the real estate business, like we continue to scale our database, every year it gets bigger and bigger. That just means we invest more and more money every year into our database to nurture those referrals. So I see the value in that, but at the same time, that's not a predictable business. I'm always building a business of hope and chance. If you're always based on referral, it's very hard to have any kind of predictability. It's very hard to grow. Like, hey, tell your employees when you're about to sign the front of their paycheck, I hope I get two referrals next week so we can get paid. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Like, that's great as a one-man show, but to me, that's, that's not owning a business. And isn't that truly your main role as a small business owner is to make sure that you actually get customers to continuously come through the door? Isn't that what we need to do in order to actually run businesses and not close up shop up and down Main Street? And using the Main Street Marketing Program, that's exactly what I've been able to do. I now have that control and I know how to generate a list, I know how to use the list, and I know how to continuously create more revenues um, based on the campaigns that I put out intentionally. Um, and I have so much more peace about it because um, I'm not worried about it anymore. I live like month to month to year thinking about, you know, month to month to quarter to year um, with my business. I'm no longer like day to day and hopefully, you know, lasting through to the week. So um, that's what the Main Street Marketing Program has absolutely done for me. I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but Main Street Marketing has taught me how to set up ads, um, made it very easy for me to learn that and really empowered me because now I know how to do it. Um, and then they've taught me, uh, you know, different concepts that have really helped us uh, figure out what ads perform best, uh, what, what is valuable to our customers. That's a simple question that I wasn't really able to answer long ago, a couple of years ago, um, but I'm able to answer that now. Most small business owners start their business and they don't know how to do everything. They don't know how to run all the different aspects of the business. They learn how to put on the accounting hat or the sales hat. But a lot of small business owners never actually learn to put on the marketing hat. So one thing I certainly never thought that I would learn from like a quote unquote advertising program is about profit margin and that relationship between really good marketing and your profit margin. So one of the first things that I realized when doing this cost analysis breakdown and figuring out, okay, how much do we uh, make off of an average item that, that we sell here in the store, like a sweater like this, is I realized that so many times we as small business owners, we focus in on this particular number, the cost of goods. So if something we paid $15 for, we can sell for 50, but there's gotta be like $35 in there of profit. And that's just not the case. We have all of these other things that have to be paid for to run the business in order to support um, even the potential to sell this particular item. And so through all of this, what we realized is that having all of these expenses involved really put us at the profitability of like a $5 profitability. Um, for this sweater, uh, you know, if we actually just raised it 10%, so, you know, 10% to $50, it's going to be $5. So this is going to be just to $55. This isn't going to make us like lose business. We're not going to actually lose customers if we raise this item by $5, right? But what does that do to our profitability? It actually takes $5 and it creates uh, a $10 profitability, doubling the profitability on average um, per piece like this. So it's the difference between, you know, um, making like $30,000 a year and making $60,000 a year. I mean, this was absolutely mind blowing to me. And it's having that fabulous marketing that allows you to create experiences and programs and the brand that you need in order to increase your prices and effectively uh, increase your profitability, even double your profitability. 
So I keep saying this phrase, you know, the Main Street Marketing Program. And really what uh, the Main Street Marketing Program has been for me is an ongoing educational uh, system. So I ha can tap into coaches, I can tap into an ongoing education to understand how to do um, this marketing, which remember was the biggest gap for me. Um, beyond all of that, the cool part is that you actually also get access to the software. And 99% uh, of small business owners, like realistically, do not have access to this type of software where you can send emails and text messages and you're able to effectively like track all of your results and measure all of your results of your campaigns all the way through to be able to understand the success of the campaign. And of course, influence people new people to actually walk through the door and increase your traffic and increase your sales. Yeah, the Main Street marketing software has really worked well for me. I'm just an average vacuum salesman. <laughs> um, and it's, it's simple and it tracks and um, it's just easy to work with. And it will show you, I can look at um, the software and um, I know what's working, what's working okay, what's working great. I can tweak um, or I can, if something's not working, I throw it out all together. If something's working really well, I'll pump as much money as I want to at that particular ad. Um, so yeah, you're, you're putting money towards what's working and you're tossing out what isn't. Very easy to work with software. The software is unbelievable uh, for the value. I mean, you can, it makes it super easy to email your customers, text your customers. We had one uh, instance this past Christmas where we sent postcards to our customers. And the best part is I didn't have to go to the post office to do it, you know? It was with a click of a button that I was able to send postcards. So um, the, the ad strategy is inc incredibly valuable and totally different than anything we've done before. But the other kind of magic to it is the software because the software is what allows you to really take advantage of what you see happening in the ads. Um, and so it's been, it's been life-changing for us. One of the, the biggest advantages of, of Main Street Marketing is just the simplicity of the software and the detailed analytics. I'm not a very numbers-driven person. Like, I don't, I don't wanna sit and look at a spreadsheet. However, you have to, so that you're not flying blind. Like, you need to know what you're spending and what's that generating results, and Main Street Marketing has it all right there for you at a glance, you can see if I spend this money in ads, I got this many leads, this many of the leads converted to a bid or, or whatever your business looks like. But it's, it's very, very simple. It's not overcomplicated. It is not a blown up CRM that now requires a team to run. I'm able to send automated uh, emails and text messages to all my customers. So I mean, currently um, say I have three or 400 of them, um, it would take me all day long, all week long, I would have to hire another employee to send out three, 400 um, texts in a week um, where I can do that with the click of a button. Honestly, you can learn the Main Street Marketing Program in like two minutes. This is coming from me who is not very tech savvy. Um, it, it's a super, super simple system to use. So I know like my marketing is working. I'm not sending out a thousand mailers and hoping the phone rings and then having to ask people like, hey, did you see our postcard? Like, no, I, I know they clicked. Here's the cost per click. Here's the cost per lead. Here's the cost per bid. Here's the cost per job completed. Like it's all right there. Great marketing does bring new customers through the door, but it isn't just limited to that. Great marketing also helps you find new ways to actually grow your business. Once we started using Main Street Marketing, it felt like we could run a multi-million dollar company uh, because it's so empowering to be able to do the things you can do with Main Street Marketing. Um, you know, for instance, I never knew what retargeting was. Um, and now I have ads set up that basically make sure that my entire community is permeated with our videos, right? So everyone within a two mile radius of my community has at least seen my video once. And then I'm able to actually capture those people who have watched a video and retarget them with something else, whether that be you know, a special we have going on in the store, whether that being a product of the week, um, whatever it is, I've discovered that there's power in being able to kind of 
hit your audience more than once, right? Um, and so those people who see it for the first time um, now see me for a second time in a completely different video and it seems very real and very organic and very natural. Uh, but in fact, that's something I've learned how to do. Um, and that has been really cool for me to know that I have the power to do this. And that's been the thing that sets us apart from any other business that I know of. Um, I, can, I can tell when I go online and look at other stores' uh, pages or social media accounts that they, they aren't doing what we're doing. Great marketing is not just checking the box off a list of tasks to do as a small business owner. It's not just putting a post out there on social media and calling it a day. It's about learning the strategies and tapping into the technology so that you can really build relationships continuously with your customers. And that's how you're able to grow your profitability. And frankly, that's how I was able to do it for my small business. Back in my first two years of running this business, January and February, I'd be you know, thankful to even see $2,000, $3,000 in sales for the entire month of January and February. And uh, I would maybe even see three people out on a Saturday, which is the busiest day of the week, just to even say hello, let alone like actually make a sale. It was really sad and really hard. And I mean, it was very apparent this past winter, which was like a, a, a dead cold winter here in Minnesota. And January, February, and March, we as a team sat down and we could track direct results from emails and text messages that we sent using the software to get people to actually come through the door. We actually, in January, February, it's not uncommon to do 12, 13, $14,000 in sales um, that we control a lot of that uh, revenue um, using the Main Street Marketing program. Since we've partnered with Main Street Marketing, our marketing's on cruise control. We don't even think about it anymore. It just does what it does. The people are coming in the door, the phone's ringing, and it frees us up to do what we wanna do, which is have time for our family, have time to take vacations, have time to coach my son's little league team, his basketball team, my daughter's volleyball team, these are the reasons we wanna be in business. We don't wanna be in business to lose sleep at night and spend hours trying to figure out how we're gonna get the next customer in the door. Main Street Marketing is taking care of that for us. And not only that, but we're able to drop our kids off at school. We are able to pick our kids up. You know, the, the crazy part about Main Street Marketing is it's $200 a month. Like, that's it, plus your ad spend. Like, if you had come to me years ago when I started the real estate business, if there was any kind of program like that that existed, it would've been a no-brainer. So it was a no-brainer with the construction business. Like, can we actually do this efficiently inside of our business? Not for $200, we can't. Like, it's crazy to me that this service that Main Street Marketing provides is $200 plus our ad spend to generate predictable leads. We have all of our metrics. Like, we have a business. We now know, like, hey, we spend this here, we generate this. And a lot of that is just from Main Street Marketing. Like, without that software and the philosophy and the coaching, I don't think we would know, hey, if we spend $300 in ad spend, we're gonna generate 50 to $60,000 in revenue that month. Like, I can't stress enough how freeing that is to know like we have a predictable business because we have predictable marketing. Being able to send out these automated texts and having that people ping on their phone has absolutely um, contributed to our success in sales. Since joining Main Street Marketing, my business uh, is up 20% and I am spending less money on advertising than I was before. So yeah, through this whole process of Main Street Marketing, my mom and I have definitely butted heads a lot. And you know, sometimes we've disagreed on strategy, sometimes we've disagreed on what direction we should take. Uh, but the one thing that was kind of an agreement for us was that this at least was worth a shot because it was so cheap compared to what we've done before. Um, you know, we pay $200 a month and we're able to send emails, send text, um, you know, collect emails, uh, collect information from our customers and create really impressive landing pages for our ads um, and do it in a way that I can do it. And I don't know anything about technology or computer software or anything like that. I would consider uh, myself um, not technological savvy, uh, despite the fact that I am a millennial. But all of this wrapped up into $200 a month was cheaper than anything we had done before. 
Um, we spent $3,000 on a magazine ad one time and we couldn't even tell if it was working. You know, but with Main Street Marketing, we're paying $200 a month for all of these features that we can constantly access and we can actually tell that it's working. Once we started using Main Street Marketing for our ads, business just started rolling and the phones were ringing off the hook um, and we were starting to do quite a bit of sales. So much so that in December 2017, we hired our first employee. It was very necessary because I was unable to do phone calls and the scheduling and keeping up with the marketing ads and being an audiologist, which was obviously the most important part. So thanks to Main Street Marketing, we recovered from the hurricane, <laughs> which was a really big deal. Hey, I have a friend here. Can you say hi? Hey. Hi, his name's Andy. Say hi. Andy. You know, we're able to be home every night and we have dinner together every night. A glorious life. Yeah, I mean, so to sum it up, we, we run our business. Our business doesn't run us, which is a nice place to be. And if I think back to all the years, the past, you know, years of trying things and all of the money that I spent on trying all these advertising efforts or getting product into the store that actually didn't sell, but I had no idea how to control any more sales or, you know, having, um, you know, revamping the store, spending all this money to do these grand overhauls, thinking that the problem was somehow here internal, that I needed to have better and more beautiful space and all of that money. If I would have just been able to save all of that, and tap into the mainstream marketing program so I could learn and really address the things that I needed to learn to, in order to run a very successful small business. Oh my word, like how much could I have saved in time, energy, straight up money by doing this? Because you remember, I mean, I was doing like $2,000 in sales a month that January, right? Um, now doing $15,000 in sales. Will I spend $200 in order to learn how to do that? Absolutely. As a business owner, whether you're a dentist, an orthodontist, a restaurant owner, Jiffy Lube, I, I don't care what it is, for a small investment of like $200 a month, Main Street Marketing is a no-brainer. You will grow your business through what they teach and their guidance. It's $200 and they don't have a contract. I mean, seriously, you're... And, and I mean, to those people, I would say it's stupid not to try. I waited five years and I imagine all the things that happened in those five years that I could have avoided. Um, and then I'm a year into it right now and I don't even feel like I've scratched the surface. Every day I'm being able to tweak things a little bit more um, with the help of Main Street and Allison. Um, I, I don't even have it close to dialed in yet. So if I could have started five years ago, I think I would have it dialed in right now and I can't imagine where I'd be then. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we're spending $200 a month on Main Street marketing and our profits are up 20%. That's probably the best investment we've made in our business. Uh, I, I saw no good thing coming from this because I was personally just didn't think there was any advertising that was going to work for small town businesses. And I fought it tooth and nail. I came up with every excuse that I could think of to the point of being really ornery about it. Um, but Jordan was just determined to make a believer out of me. So she went ahead and um, she started doing videos and they started, people started asking me about them. So as negative as I was in the beginning, I'm totally positive about it now. It's the only advertising that we've ever had that could be measured, um, which is huge. Plus it's the only advertising I've ever had that people come in the store and actually talk about. And not just in the store. I can bump into somebody at church and they'll say, hey, I saw Jordan's video and it was great. That's what you want when you spend that kind of money advertising. You know, you, you feel, want to feel like you're getting a bang for your buck. So I would recommend it for certain. I think our biggest advantage is that I signed up for Main Street Marketing and allowed some of our marketing to, to be outsourced and, and allow someone to help coach us and guide us um, to get to the level that we're at. So at the end of the day, uh, advertising for us as small business owners is really meant to generate more revenue, generate more profitability, right? There has to be that positive cause and effect that happen. 
for me in my first year of business, before I started using the mainstream marketing program, it was $60,000 for the year in sales, right? And now, actually, um, we are close to $400,000 in annual sales. That difference right there of $60,000 to $400,000 using the mainstream marketing program, certainly worth $200 a month. If you're a small business owner watching this video, here's what I would recommend. One, don't be scared. Um, you, you have to be ready and you have to just jump all in. Two is to find the right people to help you. And by far and away, Main Street Marketing is the people to hire to help you with your marketing. It's a couple hundred dollars a month. You pay for some ads on social media. It's, it's not a lot of money to, to give it a try. And but you will find that in the long run, it will be worth every penny. And it's only gonna grow from there. So anytime I've ever set any goals for, for business, there, there's always two goals that, uh, that kind of need to be in alignment, and that's lifestyle and money. So, you know, I became a small business owner because I wanted to make more money. In the beginning, without marketing, without Main Street marketing, not knowing what to do, the only way I could make more money was to work more hours. Well, obviously my lifestyle goal now declined. So it's really cool today when I look at it through Main Street marketing, implementing what they teach, you know, income is here and lifestyle is also here. They're scaling directly with each other. So, you know, we now have more money to, to enjoy and you know, kind of the nice thing about when you have a little extra money is when you do have time off, you can actually go do something with that time off. So I feel like I'm more present with my kids. I spend more time with my kids now today. Bank account looks better than it did. Um, and a lot of that's due to, to Main Street Marketing. You know, when you own a small business, your strength is whatever your small business is. Most people who get into small business, their strength is not marketing. You have to find the partner who can do the marketing that is going to take your, your money into account and make it, make it accountable for that money. And Main Street Marketing does that. And, you know, I would say, I don't want to say that I wish I would have known that when we first started. We, we got lucky and we started with Main Street Marketing and we were able to come out of the gates running and it's really helped us succeed. If we wouldn't have found Main Street Marketing, I don't know if we'd be sitting here today. Well, we certainly wouldn't be sitting here and enjoying, you know, life and having the freedom and the way we are able to run our business, that's for sure. If you are a small business owner who wants to grow your business, you need Main Street Marketing. My suggestion, at the very least, if you're spending, let's say $500 a month is your ad budget, which I, um, I think most people are spending, cut it to 300, put the other 200 into this, try it. There's no contract. Try it for a month, try it for two months. I would honestly give it at least six. Um, you'll see results. I have no doubt you'll see results um, and uh, then go from there. Um, but that was what I did. I cut 100%. I, so I am seriously looking at it like I am saving $500 a month, getting better results, more sales, um, putting the cream back on the top of the cake. I would definitely recommend and don't wait, do it now. So if you're watching this right now and you're on the fence uh, and you just think, nah, you heard the stories but you don't know that that could work for you or your business, uh, I get it because I was there too. And at some point I really thought this is too good to be true. Um, but I jumped in with both feet and I haven't looked back. It's been the best investment we've made in our store, hands down. Um, and you know, if you want to grow your business, if you want to learn and be empowered really uh, to be able to grow your business, then you should join Main Street Marketing. I cannot let this documentary end without pointing out to you that we're talking about $200 a month. That's crazy. Think about, you know, all the stories that you've heard of. Think about Trevor and really where he came from. Think about Jordan and Linda and the growth that they have had. Even though they had already, you know, kind of had a time and proven business, they still